Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Ghost Fishing. So today I'm actually doing a filleting episode of how I like to fillet fish. Um, I've actually got a school jew in here and these are the four knives I tend to use for jew fish. Um, I do use other knives for other styles of fish but I will explain each one of these knives and their purposes that I use them for and for other aspects of fishing. So um, yeah, thanks again for watching and let's get into it. Peace. Alright, so this is my little schoolie. He's just under about 800 or 80 centimetres. Um, so firstly, that's a mustard knife. Um, you can pick them up for about 40 bucks, I think, roughly 36 or 40 bucks. Um, then now I've got my Victoria Knox. This one's a lot more expensive. You pay about 70 from your tackle store from that guy. Um, very sharp and a very, very good knife. I really like that. So I also have a Victoria Knox serrated knife that I use when I fill it um, fish. I'll show you the reason I own this. And a mate from uh, Yambara Luca area, basically taught me how to use one of these while filleting because I'd never used to use one. Um, Justin Grievous, legend for showing me that. It's a really handy knife. And then also I've got my dive knife. Um, anyone that goes fishing off the rocks or likes to take the jewels from their jewfish, these are a very, very handy knife to have in your equipment. Very strong blade so you don't snap them. Um, good for collecting bait definitely worthy of a dive knife um, about 27 bucks I think for that guy so and I forget because how much that one was because Justin bought me that one for a present so cheers mate okay basically I start with this knife because it's very sharp um, you just want to run an insert down along the head right up along the back of the head down to the belly okay then yeah look out buddy then it's just a little incision and we're running it along the backbone Look out, mate. Down along the backbone, all the way to the tail, keeping that nice, nice and flat. Back up towards his head. Now, as you get that backbone, keeping it nice and flat. Come on, over here, please. Okay, keeping it nice and flat, we're running along that backbone. Once you get to the backbone, it's nice and straight through. This is on the smaller fish. Now run it flat. It's a big fish. All the way along the backbone Daddy, and off. It has big fish. Now, I like to do it reverse way. All the way up until I get to there. Oh, shattered a little bit. This is where this knife comes in handy. Such a sharp, it'll cut through bone and everything. You don't have to worry about the ribs. See, it just cuts like a beast. And that's one fillet. Flip that over and it's the same process again. Now we've got up along the head. Because I have kids, it's a no bone family, so I'm not allowed bones. Now, this way I start at the tail and I just work my way all the way along that backbone. All the way up till I get to his head again. Okay. 
straighten up along that tail. Same thing again, keeping that nice, nice and flat. Now, you got him flat, insert it. Just go along that backbone. Like that, this is where I get the old sharp beast again. And it's running along. Hey mate. Let's do a catch, where'd you get that one? It's down on the rocks. Thought number two. Okay, and now as you can see, if you want to keep your wings with this knife too, it just cuts through anything. Gotta be super careful with that bark because it will cut you. Straight through like that. With him over. Just straight through the bone like that, eh? It's just so sharp, and that's the wings just straight off. I like to flatten them out. Ready for the barbie, those. Now with the dive knife, anyone that likes to get the jewels out of the dewy, basically get that serrated one again. Take the head of the gills out. Now, at the back of the gills, You'll see. He snagged again. At the back of the gills, you'll see this ball here. That's where I like to use this dive knife because it won't break. So just stab it in, turn it. There's one jewel. Flip it over. Same on the other side, stab it in, turn it. And you'll see deep in there, the, is your jewel. Sometimes they're a pain to get out. You can just turn the head and give it a bang. Oh, shut it off. And that's the other jewel. And that's your pair of jewels that you get in all your jewfish. The bigger the fish, the bigger the jewel. But um, that's my fish filleted now. What I tend to do is with my kids when they're fishing here at the same time, I take off any of this meat here and they use that for bait. And it works really well for brim. Especially our boat ramp because Fish feed on carcasses, that's my tip. Fish love carcasses, that's all they feed on at boat ramps. So I'll even take the back of the head out for them. And it all becomes bait. So we use pretty much everything off this fish, really. Take the back of the head out of there. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I got the bait here. And we'll throw that in the river. Give them a space and a clean. So they get yucky. I usually bring my own chopping board that I forgot. So these places are pretty good. Now that's the only purpose I use for that knife, but I'll um, use that out of the rocks to catch kanji and bleed fish. It's um, a really handy knife. So. Guy, he served his purpose too. Now for the mustard, it's a lot blunter and I keep it blunt because for skin and fish, basically skin and fish, um, you don't want it too sharp or it just cuts through the skin. So one thing I do for my skinning is I cut backwards towards my fingers, don't cut yourself, 
gives you a little thing to grip onto. Then we run in, keeping it nice and flat, pulling that skin along. And we flip it over, that's our fillet. Skin, fat's gone. Okay, then I've got all my bones along here. Just a simple sharp knife. Simple cut. Take all of them off. As I said, I got kids, so no bones allowed. Feed the pelican. Now I like to take out this bloodline that runs right down the centre. Right down there is a bloodline. And it just helps the taste of that fish. Just run a nice insert along. Take that off. Now, same with this side. Just running. Can get hard to grip. But... <laughs> now I'll also use that bloodline for bait for the kids too, so nothing gets wasted. Okay, and there are my two fillets. That's one fillet skinned. Check it for worms. If you ever see parasite, cut it out. Um, filleted and ready for the pan. I'll also cut this up to serving sizes. Once I cut it up to serving sizes, straight into a um, Ziploc bag and ready. Uh, just an, one thing I learnt from another fisher, an old um, fishing pro that lives in Brown. Um, he told me if you do get a bigger fish, obviously this is a smaller one and I probably will just stake it, um, probably the other piece, but I'll just show you the example. If you get a bigger thick fish, um, when you cook it, you put it in the pan and it'll cook the outside and sometimes the inside won't cook very well because it's different thicknesses through the fillet. Um, one thing I did get taught was if you just get your knife and you cut every slice on a 45 like that so every piece will be the same thickness all the way through see it's the same thickness all the way through rather than thick and thin You can choose how thick you want those pieces too on the 45. That way you just tsh, tsh, and it's ready and it is absolutely sensational. You won't overcook it or you won't have any undercooked pieces in your dish. So yeah, that's just one way that I've been taught to do it now and I do recommend it. Bit of fat. Um, Especially if you're doing curries and stuff like that, because you chuck it in and it's all cooked in one temperature at the same time. It just tastes sensational. So there it is. That's my uh, two fillets of Jewfish, all packed in separate bags, all in portion size for um, dinners. So it's four meals for um, me and my family. Um, Basically straight in the freezer can pull one out at each time rather than pulling it all out and defrosting a whole lot. Um, but I am trying to find a better way to store this to make it more eco-friendly. So if anyone out there knows a lot better way, I know cryovacking is really good. It extends the life of the fish by months and months and months. Um, the only thing is it's still got a lot of plastic that you've got to use each time you cry back. I'm trying to find a way to store this without no plastic and whether I can get a container with layers and lay it 
and another layer and lay it. I'm not sure. Um, if anyone knows, let me know because I'd like, like to figure that out and make it a lot better. Alrighty, cheers. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thanks again for watching. Um, it's just a quick one to get me through to my next fishing episode. So, yeah, basically they're the knives I like to use. Um, you don't have to have all these knives. Obviously, you can do it with one. I just prefer to have a couple because it makes my job a bit easier. Alrighty, guys. Thanks again. See you next time. Peace.